One of the biggest problems you're going to find when you're trying to scrape data from a site is that attribute error where that element doesn't exist on the page. Here's a good example. This, this product page here has a minus 5% off. And this is a new element on this page, but it doesn't exist on this one. So if we were to run the same scraping function on both of these pages, when we hit this one, it's going to throw us that attribute error. So I'm going to run my code here just to show you. So this is going to be the first one that we hit that does have that savings. There we go. We can find it there. But now we, here's the attribute error. Non-type object has no uh, attribute get text. And that's because when we've gone to try and find uh, this element here with our select, it's not found it. So we're trying to get text on an element that doesn't exist. Now we can get around this though. What I'm going to show you is one way of doing it, which is actually abstracting out to creating a new kind of get text passing function that we can use that's going to either return the information we want or none. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my code and I'm going to create a new function. I'm just going to call this uh, extract text. And we're going to need to give it the soup object and then the selector that we're going to use. Then we want to do try because we're going to be using Python's try and accept to actually handle that attribute error. So if it does exist, I want to try to return out the actual data here. So I'm going to do soup.select1 because we're going to select the first one. Then we're going to pass in the selector that we're giving it to this function. Then we're going to do our get text because we want the text from this element. And I'm going to throw in a dot strip as well because if you saw when I ran this earlier, we had a load of white space. We're going to get, get rid of it here too. Now, if that doesn't work, we're going to do our accept on this attribute error. So I'm going to say accept uh, attribute error as error. And I'm going to just going to print it out so we can see it working. We're also then going to return none. So what we've done is we've created a function that we can now use instead of these selectors within our dictionary or whatever your output is, that's going to either give us the information that we want or none. So that means that we can use this a lot more uh, across multiple different pages on the same site just to make our lives a lot easier. So let's go ahead and change this over. I'm going to do some copying and pasting here. So bear with me just a second. We want to actually get rid of all this and we'll say instead of select, we're going to do our extract text function and we're going to say we want to give it the soup. Our selector is this. Let's paste that in. And I don't know why Fleet does that. That's annoying. There we go. So let's just duplicate this three times. Remove the rest of this. And we'll do so this one's price. And this one is savings. Now we just need to put in the right selectors for each of these. And this one here as well. And we'll move the return here that we don't want. So now instead of using the selectors down here, we're going to give it through our extract text function. So hopefully this is going to mean that when we run this, we're going to see completed because we're not going to fall over that attribute error and we're going to get savings none down here. This is a nice, neat way of using abstraction to create another function to split things up to make our lives easier when we're getting data. If you've enjoyed this video and you're more interested in how I actually wrote this whole script to get this product data from Amazon, you're going to want to watch this video right here.